Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking burning logo reveal effect using Adobe Illustrator and After Effects. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a logo. So I'm just going to be using Illustrator. So I'm just going to quickly uh, create a new document. 1200 by 1200 uh, pixels will be fine. Just press create. Once we have that, then what I need to do is I need to come and grab the line segment tool and I'm just gonna hold shift and draw a line down. Doesn't matter really how long it is. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the selection tool and I'm gonna hold option on my Mac and I'm just gonna draw out another line, probably about 50 pixels apart. Doesn't have to be that perfect, but that's the number I'm working with. Then I need to duplicate this eight times. So that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm pressing Command D to duplicate. Now, once I have that, I need to press Command C to copy. And then I'm just gonna to go to edit, paste in place. And then I'm just going to drag it down. I'm gonna hold shift so it snaps down there. So now I have to create the sections for the V. So what I need to do is I'm gonna press Command C to copy. And then I'm gonna to go to edit, paste in place. And this time I'm gonna to go to the transform option. If you don't have it, go to Windows Transform. And then I'm just gonna change the angle to 240 degrees. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. So I'm gonna press Command C to copy edit, uh, paste in place, and this time it's gonna be negative 240 degrees. So now that gives me my grid, and so now I can actually make the triangle logo out of this. So the tool that I'm gonna be using is the Shape Builder tool. So I'm gonna click on that, I'm gonna press Command A to highlight everything, and then I'm gonna slowly start building my shape. Now be careful that you don't go over into the areas that you don't want filled because if you do that, then you'll have to start again. Cool, so now once you have your shape, all you have to do is just click on it and then you can move it away and then all you have to do is just give it a fill and there you go. So I'm just gonna save this as an Illustrator file and I'll take it into After Effects. Cool, so now we're in After Effects. So the first thing that we need to do here is we have to create a new composition. 1920 by 1080 pixels will be fine at a duration of about 10 seconds. Press OK. Once we have that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to import our file. So I'm just gonna right click, import file, and then I'm gonna find my logo layer and then just press OK. And then I'm gonna drag it into my composition. Now to see this a little bit better, I'm just gonna use the effect uh, fill and then I'm also going to change that to white. I'm also going to make sure that I hit this uh, button over here to continuously rasterize. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press S for scale and just scale it up a little bit just so it fits the composition a bit better. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to go to layer pre-compose and I'm just gonna call this uh, logo and I'm gonna move all the attributes into the new composition. And then once we've got that, then I need to go back to layer and go down to auto trace. And then I'm just gonna press okay. And then what that would have done, if I press U on my keyboard, it would have created these mask paths for me. Now I don't need the keyframes because I'm gonna do my own animating there, but I do need the mask paths, which is how Saber works. So once we have that, then I'm going to import my effect Saber. Now Saber is a free plugin from Video Copilot. So if you don't have it, please download it. I'm gonna change the preset to burning. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the color. So I'm gonna be using this color scheme. I'm gonna be using this blue for the actual burning core. So I'm just gonna paste it back in here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to customize core, change the core type to layer masks. And now I have that cool saber effect on that logo that we've just created in Illustrator. So that's looking pretty cool, but I'm just gonna bring down the glow size a little bit to about two, and then I'll play around with some of the other settings a little bit later. So now we need to animate this. So the first thing that we're gonna do here is, or well actually before we animate it, we're gonna come down to the render settings. I'm gonna just go to the composite settings and change it to transparent. And so now to animate this, what we need to do is I'm gonna animate the mask evolution. And so I'm gonna click the stopwatch on that. I'm gonna start it at zero. Move forward in time to about three seconds. I'm gonna change the angle to negative 180. Then I'm gonna move 
forward to about eight seconds and I'm going to change it back down to zero. And so now the next thing that we need to animate, so moving back to the start, is the end offset. So I'm going to start that at zero and then I'm going to move forward in time about three seconds. So this is going to be now 100. And so now if you've done that correctly, now you will have this cool kind of logo reveal happening with the saver and that's looking pretty cool but we're going to change it up a little bit more so now we're going to jump to about four seconds and what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on the stopwatch for start size and i'm going to move forward another two seconds and i'm going to change that value back down to zero and then the final thing that i'm going to uh, animate is the start offset which is going to go from zero to 100 that will finish up around about here so change that to 100 and so now if i look at all the keyframes you can see what's actually happening here the logo is being revealed sticks around for a while and then it slowly fades out so i'm just going to highlight all those keyframes and go to animation uh, keyframe assistant easy ease and that will make it a little bit smoother and so now i'm going to move on from there so now the next thing that we need to do is we need to duplicate this layer so all i'm going to do is press command d to duplicate that and the bottom layer i'm going to call reflection and once i've done that the next thing that i need to do is i need to right click on this go to transform and then go to flip vertical and so now i've got two instances of that same logo and what we're going to do is we're going to have the bottom layer as the reflection so i'm just going to come down to down to this second layer press s for scale untick this constraint proportions and i'm just going to bring this down to maybe somewhere in between 30 and 40 and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to press p for position and then i'm just going to bring it down maybe somewhere around there like that so the next thing that we need to do is we need to change the opacity so i'm going to bring the opacity all the way down maybe 40 50 percent something like that and then i'm going to search for an effect called fast box blur and i'm going to bring up this blur radius so maybe somewhere around 21 22 23 depending on how much blur you want so now we want to give that reflection a texture so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new solid and i'm going to call this uh, fractal and i'm going to search for the effect called fractal noise and i'm going to change a few things over here so i'm going to change the noise type to block i'm going to increase the contrast to let's say somewhere around 200 and i'm going to bring down the complexity to about four so i need to create and make this a 3d layer so if you don't see that make sure you click toggle switches so that you can manipulate it in 3d and then what we are going to do is press r on our keyboards and now we can bring up all of these values so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to play around with some of these settings so firstly i'm just going to bring up the x rotation maybe until it's something like that so minus negative uh, 75 and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to press p on my keyboard for position and then the y value i'm just going to bring it down till it's about there so it's going to just be a texture just for that reflection so now what i need to do is i need to search in a, for an effect called motion tile so now once i have motion tile and i've clicked mirror edges i'm just going to increase the output width and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to pre-compose that layer so i'm going to go to that layer go to layer pre-compose and i'm just going to call it fractal i can hide that layer because we don't need to actually see it there and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to search for another um, effect and put it onto adjustment layer and this effect is going to be called compound blur and all I'm going to do is I'm going to change the adjustment layer to the fractal. And you can see what happens here. It's really got that cool texture that adds to that um, reflection. And so now if you want to move and play around with some of the reflection, you can. So maybe I'll just drop that down slightly. So now once we have that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to add a camera. So I'm just going to create a new camera. 
and I'm gonna be running with a let's say 50 mil camera but I'm gonna uncheck this lock to zoom button over here so I'm just gonna press OK and I'm gonna make my logo and reflection layer a 3d layer and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the camera, I'm gonna press P to bring up the position and I'm gonna play around with some of these settings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a small zoom. So we'll probably start at maybe around, let's say 3,100 and then I'm gonna to move to the end of the composition and I'm just going to bring it back to kind of where it was before. And so just scrub through to see where everything is. And once you're happy with that, it just creates a subtle movement forward with the logo. So I think that's looking pretty cool. And now we just have to dress it up. So the first thing that we need to do here is we need to add a background. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another new solid. I'm gonna call it BG and I'm gonna put it at the bottom of everything. And I'm going to search for an effect called the gradient ramp and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a radial ramp and then I'm just going to swap the colors because I want more black down here but I'm just going to change the top color so now I'm going to use this the, the darkest color out of the color palette and I'm going to put it back into After Effects and so now I'm just going to play around with some of those settings so I'm just going to move this so I'm going to click that little point here and I'm just going to play around with how much of a uh, gradient I want. So I, I do want this dark. So I'm going to maybe play around with something like that and maybe even bring that up slightly. So cool. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that gradient. So the next thing that we need to do is I'm just going to add another adjustment layer and I'm going to search for the effect called curves. And so what I'm going to do with curves is I'm just going to create a slight S bend here. So now this will kind of bring down the contrast, make it look a little bit more gritty and you can play around with some of these settings yourself. Cool. So now once you're happy with that, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add another new adjustment layer. And on this one, I'm going to look for an effect called Unsharp Mask. And I'm just going to bring the radius up to maybe, maybe let's say 10, something like that. So it just makes it a little bit more sharper. Now to add to that sharpness, we're going to add another final adjustment layer and we're just going to add some noise to bring it all together. So I'm going to bring the noise up to about, let's say 10% and now it gives it that kind of gritty look. So now the final thing that we can do is we can go back into our logo layer and we can play around with some of these settings. So for example, if you want to add some more glow bias in here, so maybe I'll bring this up to about 0.3 and you can have a play around with some glow spread. You know, there's some really cool looks there that you wanna create. So I think that that's looking pretty cool. And the other thing is to go into the flicker settings and just uh, bring this up to about 50%. And so this will mean how much flicker on that glow is actually happening. And so the final thing that I'm gonna do to this uh, project is I'm going to import a smoke background. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag it just above my um, background layer. So now once you put that stock footage on there, all you have to do is just change it to screen and maybe lower the opacity slightly. So I'm just gonna maybe bring it down to about 90%. So the final thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna maybe go back to my uh, Saber plugin and just increase the glow bias, maybe just a little bit higher. So it just uh, glows a little bit more. And anyways, th that's it. So thanks for watching this short tutorial on how to create a cool logo reveal with a lot of smoke and noise. And yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.